Hello everyone, this is Little Black Dragon, and welcome back to another installment of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins Dwarven Commoner Edition. In our last installment, uh, we learned a little bit more about our companions and had a bit of a feelsy moment with all of them uh, after speaking with the Guardian of the Gauntlet, who has given us permission to go through a few trials in order to see the urn of sacred ashes. And so with that, uh, let us move forward. Now, the next thing we need to do is talk to these spirits and answer a few riddles. But before I do that, I'm going to compulsively save because I'm like that, and also because RPG is. You always want to save frequently in RPGs. Now, I believe we're going to start here with Brona and continue in a zigzag fashion. Let us move forward, shall we? Echoes from a shadow realm, whispers of things yet to come. Thought's strange sister dwells in night, is swept away by dawning light. Of what do I speak? Uh, dreams? A dream came upon me as my daughter slumbered beneath my heart. It told of her life, and of her betrayal and death. I am sorrow and regret. I am a mother weeping bitter tears for a daughter she could not save. Oh, so Brona is Andraste's mother, then. And uh, an interesting parallel to uh, Mary and a few other mothers from uh, mythos and religious folklore in the real world. Alright. Next person. Gilise, I guess? Let's see. What riddle does she have for us? The smallest lark could carry it, while a strong man might not. Of what do I speak? Um... Let's see... Um... Well... They can't carry wind. <laughs> A coconut. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh... Um... The plague, maybe... A tune sounds like it might be it. I need to hear that again. The smallest lark could carry it, while a strong man might not. Of what do I speak? Um... A tune? Yes, I was Andraste's dearest friend in childhood, and always we would sing. She celebrated the beauty of life, and all who heard her would be filled with joy. They say the maker himself was moved by Andraste's song, and then she sang no more of simple things. Yes, I was right. Now, there is one riddle I always have trouble with in this one. And I always second question myself. Second, yeah, second guess myself. Alright, next person. Thane Shotan. I'd neither a guest nor a trespasser be. In this place I belong, that belongs also to me. Of what do I speak? Um... Ferelden, no. An alienage, no. Death, no. Um, home? It was my dream for the people to have a home of their own, where we would have no masters but ourselves. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and thus we followed Andraste against the Imperium. But she was betrayed. And so were we. Alright, so I was right for that one. 
Next. Lady Vasilla. Vasilia? Well, I'm going to save here and keep going. Alright. Uh, Lady Vasilia, what do you have for us? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The debt of blood must be paid in full. Of what do I speak? Um... Vengeance? Yes, my husband Hesarian would have chosen a quick death for Andraste. I made him swear that she would die publicly with her war leaders. That all would know the Imperium's strength. I am justice. I am vengeance. Blood can only be repaid in blood. A very interesting thought. Pay attention very closely, uh, dear watchers, because that theme of vengeance and justice will be revisited in Dragon Age Awakening. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry for the repeat. It will be revisited in Awakening, but it will be a most prominent theme when we get to Dragon Age 2. So listen carefully and heed her words, dear watchers. For they shall have relevance again very soon. Alright. Next. General Maffarath. A poison of the soul, passion's cruel counterpart. From love she grows till love lies slain. Of what do I speak? Jealousy. Yes, jealousy drove me to betrayal. I was the greatest general of the Alamari, but beside her I was nothing. Hundreds fell before her on bended knee. They loved her, as did the Maker. I loved her too, but what man can compare with a god? Andraste's husband, who wound up betraying her to the Imperium. Now this, uh, this is one of the harder riddles I have a difficult time with. So if I wind up reloading because I get it wrong, don't be surprised. I usually get it wrong. Let's see. Disciple Harvard. Havard. Blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. Let's see if we can answer his riddle. The bones of the world stretch towards the sky's embrace, veiled in white, like a bride greeting her groom. Of what do I speak? Um... Clouds, sheep, I don't think so. <sighs> I'd like you to repeat that. The bones of the world stretch towards the sky's embrace, veiled in white, like a bride greeting her groom. Of what do I speak? Um, the mountains? Yes. I carried Andraste's ashes out of Tevinter into the mountains to the east, where she could gaze ever into her maker's sky. No more fitting a tomb than this could we find. Alright, yes. Uh, this guy I also have troubles with, so... And I think it would be fitting if Archon Hesarian went last, so... I think we're gonna go with this guy next. Now his for always uh his for me has always been the most difficult. So let's see if I can think about this carefully. Alright, disciple Cather Cathari Cather Disciple, speak your riddle. No man has seen it. 
But all men know it. Lighter than air, sharper than any sword, comes from nothing, but will fell the strongest armies. Of what do I speak? Um... Well, fire doesn't come from nothing, and neither does women or lightning. Hunger? Yes. Hunger was the weapon used against the wicked men of the Teventer Imperium. The Maker kindled the sun's flame, scorching the land. Their crops failed, and their armies could not march. Then he opened the heavens and bade the waters flow, and washed away their filth. I am Kefer, disciple of Andraste and commander of her armies. I saw these things done, and knew the Makers smiled on us. Alright, I actually got that riddle right this time. And I wasn't sure I would because it's been a long time. But I am so glad that I actually figured it out. Alright. Last but not least. Archon Hesarian, speak your riddle. She wields the broken sword, and separates true kings from tyrants. Of what do I speak? Hmm... I think that would be mercy. Yes. I could not bear the sight of Andraste's suffering, and mercy bade me end her life. I am the penitent sinner, who shows compassion as he hopes compassion will be shown to him. Yes! I got all the riddles right this time! Yay! So hopefully that will be helpful for all of you, uh, sitting at home or wherever watching this. And... Oh my word, is that... Lesky? Hey, what's shaping? Lesky, but, but, but you're dead. You're right, I'm dead. No thanks to you, Sal Raka. <sighs> I'm sorry it ended that way. So am I, Sal Raka. I had to do what I did to survive, and so did you. I don't blame you for leaving us all. That's the way it goes, isn't it? You can't afford to think about the past. You have to look forward. I'm proud of you for moving on. Here, I found this lying around and I've no use for it. I know you'll do something good with it. Goodbye, my friend. Remember me. <laughs> my fields! Why? Why, game? Why do you twist my fields into so many twisted shapes? <sighs> but yeah, uh, about the comment I picked earlier with the Guardian about uh, them still being miserable. I mean, in a sense, Rika's not miserable anymore because she now has uh, a loving person, I guess you could call the closest thing to a husband she's ever had. And she has a son that she cares about. And she's treated fairly well by the people who love her. Well, except for her mother and my mother, because, well, she's always been kind of problematic. But there's still the problems of the assembly and the nobles and the caste system. And even with all the uh, influence and uh, wealth and abundance that Rika has come into. I mean, uh, our mother was still the bitchy drunk that she always was. Uh, being a Grey Warden has been a very trying experience, and Rika will still have to deal with the fact that, you know, she's castless, and prejudice is not the easiest thing to overcome. 
whether in fantasy or the real world. It's sort of a fact of the human condition, at least right now. Uh, it is a difficult thing to overcome, so even if I did stay, there would have been all these trying things, and if I did stay, I may have very well have been arrested and executed, so... And that would have made my family even more miserable than they already were. Uh, and of course, Lesky felt like he had nowhere to go, which is why he sided with Jarvia. And I am very sad that it had to end that way. I wish that we could convince Lesky that his friend or companion or whatever you want to envision their relationship as could have convinced him that he could do better. That he didn't have to throw his life away. And on that thought, uh, we are out of time. So I'm going to save again and cut the video off here, but I will see you all in the next installment of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins Dwarven Commoner Edition. You know the drill. See you next time.